In this video, we're going to be exploring a DLC sized Subnautica mod that literally adds two new biomes to Subnautica, along with adding new elements to the game's story, introducing new flora, fauna, and leviathans, and adding new equipment and base pieces, each of which can be constructed with the many new resources now found throughout the crater. The amount of new content this mod adds to the game is honestly jaw dropping, so without any further ado, let's dive right in. So I said that we were going to be talking about a single mod in this video that adds a whole bunch of new stuff, but I actually lied for the sake of simplicity. I know it's crazy, a YouTuber lying that would seriously never happen. But in reality, this mod is really seven separate mods created by the same amazing person that are all connected and work together to significantly expand on Subnautica's world. Now, it is also important for me to mention that this mod is legacy Subnautica only, so you can only play it on Steam if you roll back to before the 2.0 update. A guide on how to do so will of course be available in the description along with the down the links to all of these mods. Finally, these mods are still technically in beta, which means they're still being updated, so their content will change to some extent in the future. But anyways, let's get into the juicy stuff. Alright, I want to start off this video with what I think is the coolest aspect of this mod, which is of course the two new biomes. Now, something like this has never really been done, at least on this level, and it's honestly quite amazing, and I'm really impressed with how it turned out. So anyways, the first biome is known as the Glass Forest. Now, if you remember in vanilla Subnautica, underneath the underwater island, as you can see we're approaching them there's this really unique area it's kind of barren there's a ton of bone sharks and a bunch of resources and volcanic activity and everything but it's always been a fascinating area to me and i've always just kind of liked it a bit and gone there quite frequently detecting intense volcanic activity on the sea floor in this region resulting in high concentrations of mineral resources mm, maybe that's your hint for what happened to this area so yeah as you might have guessed the creator of this mod decided to turn this area into a completely new biome oh we have stuff loading in oh wow that is quite laggy okay there we go now you can kind of start to see it also you probably saw this guy ignore him for now we'll get back to him later all right ladies and gentlemen we have just entered the glass forest biome now as you can see it's extremely dark down here it's of course meant to be this way it's meant to be hard to explore because of that and as you can also probably hear we also have a ghost leviathan right over there which is going to be the main hazard to the player if you're in survival there we go i went ahead and turned off the fog so you can kind of see this area a little bit better and as you can see it's mainly dominated by these weird glass plant -like like structures. These guys are known as deep vine as you can see and of course the relatives to creep vine and blood kelp. And as you can also see we also have this new wreck down here which isn't in vanilla subnautica and so this is the main focal point of the biome you'd come down here to get this wreck and to get the necessary equipment that is found inside however to me my favorite of the two new biomes that have been added is the next one which is known as the void spikes which might give you a couple ideas of what this is going to be like Short range scans show an abundance of suspended land masses in the region below, detecting unknown mineral deposits. Interesting. Ladies and gentlemen, as you could probably tell, we are now in the void. Hello, Ghost Leviathan. And yeah, as you can kind of see, there's a couple floating structures that are now present in this section of the void. Of course, this area is also extremely dark. Again, it's meant to be this way, but I'm going to go ahead and turn off the fog so you can see it a little bit better. There we go. Now you can see the islands just a little bit better. And honestly, yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy with how they're designed. I've seen a couple various different island-like thingies in the void, and these are honestly my favorite. I especially like how they don't really feel empty. They're all populated very heavily by various resources and flora. And another thing you also might have noticed as I've been here is there's been some weird leviathan roars. Oh, there's one that have been sounding off in the background here. Now, these are the roars of a new leviathan that's going to be added here. Now, the work in progress name for this leviathan is the Photogalvanic Leviathan. Its effects and sounds and everything are already integrated into the game, but it still needs to be modeled, animated, and actually put into the game. I can put on screen a very vague idea of what this might look like. This is not actually official concept art. It's basically just a random cool picture that the mod creator found online. But yeah, let me see if I can show you some of the effects of this creature. What I will say is that it sends out an EMP kind of thing, it kind of flash bangs the player and then it also blocks any sonar from any submersibles you may have with you oh there we go Y'all saw that. There's one of his effects. That was something else. Now, there have also been several changes to flora and fauna, as well as some new flora and fauna that have been actually added to the game. And a lot of these changes or additions match early concepts that were originally intended to be in Subnautica. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Grand Reef. Now, y'all probably remember these guys. They're anchor pods. They're basically just big blue balls, right? But this mod has made it so they actually have a purpose. Now, when you run into them, maybe with your Seamoth, or even if a Leviathan's run into them, or if you just slash them with your knife, this happens. Boom. 
As you can see, it exploded and let out a bunch of air bubbles. Now, the idea of this is essentially that you'd be able to trade some health, yes, these things damage you, in order to get a couple of air bubbles to refill your oxygen temporarily and maybe survive a little bit longer. You'll also see these guys around here. These guys are known as Abyssal Stalkers. They're definitely a cool idea that I honestly could see in Vanilla Subnautica. Like the red on black, I don't know, it just looks super cool to me. Ooh, and I just realized it actually changes colors. Yeah, I didn't even realize that. That's really interesting. All right, we're in the Blood Kelp Zone now, and you'll notice at the very top of this blood kelp plant it almost kind of looks like a mouth well this mod makes it so it now acts like a mouth as well as you can see it grabbed me i'd of course be taking damage if i were in survival and it just kind of grabs me here for a little bit before eventually letting me go from what i understand that's kind of a cool concept this is also something i could definitely see in vanilla another thing that's been added this time in the dunes biome is these new plants known as luma shrooms now these guys actually shoot out as you can see right there what are called lumen shroom oil which is of course a resource that can be used to craft certain things. I feel like something like this definitely needed to be added to the dunes because the dunes seriously just feels super barren. And there's also a counterpart to the luma shrooms that can be found in the lava zone. These guys are known as lantern shrooms. And as you can see, instead of shooting out what the luma shroom shot out, they shoot out what are essentially lava bombs, which of course would be a hazard if you were in some sort of submarine. Also a cool idea. And again, this is something I could very well see existing in vanilla subnautica. We also have these cool guys right here, which are known as pyropod pitcher plants and they can be found in various locations around the crater. There's also these interesting plants which are known as alkali vines. As you can see, when you get close to them, they kind of shrink, but when you're far enough away, they look normal. Again, something I could see in Vanilla Subnautica, they just kind of spice up certain biomes and make them seem a little less barren. All right, for this next thing, we're actually in the void because it's the best place to see plankton, which is another creature that's been added to the game. As you can see, it's all glowy and everything looks really cool. Now, as we're in the void here, you might notice something kind of weird, which is these weird bubble-like things is rising from who knows where in the void. Now, if we go up to scan one, as you can see, these are known as void bubbles. And essentially what these guys do is they act as barriers to exploration of the void. They'll latch onto any submersibles you might have and they'll start dragging them down. It doesn't really explain where they come from. They're just kind of a natural phenomenon. But yeah, they're an interesting new mechanic that's been added to the game. But what's most interesting to me about the void is what happens when you go below 1,000 meters. All right, so as you can see, we're getting pretty close to 1,000 meters. Now, watch closely what happens when we cross the 1,000 meter mark. As you can see, we have these three ghosties with us. All right, here we go. 1,000 meters. Whoa. Uh-oh, where did that guy go? And boom, the other guy's gone. Look at that. Uh-oh, what's happening to this guy? Okay, that's not... And boom, he's gone. And I should be next. Boom, and I'm way down deep somewhere in the void. Let's look at this PDA entry. So essentially what this says is very deep somewhere in the void, right? There's some massive organism that's never really been seen. But what it does do, right, is it grabs anything it sees and drags them down way deep into the void, presumably to feed on them. Of course, if you're human, you're also gonna like run out of oxygen eventually, right? And so from what I understand, this creature is going to actually be modeled and added to the game at some point. So it would drag you down really deep right here and then it would start attacking you from what i understand honestly an idea like this is really cool i feel like a lot of people have asked for this to be the barrier to prevent people from going into the void for a very long time i really like the concept of there just being a huge tentacle just grabbing you and dragging you way down deep and then this huge monster attacking you so i'm honestly really excited to see when the creature is modeled and added to the game and if that happens along with a photo galvanic leviathan being added i'm definitely gonna have to make another video about this all right so next up i want to talk about the new base species that have been added to the game all right so first off we have this sea base so in our antenna. I'll show you what that does in just a second here. We also have a creature repellent pylon. Interesting concept that I would assume prevents creatures from going near your base. There's this sea base beacon right here. As you can see, when I go far away enough, it kind of sends the details of the base right here, which is honestly something that I think should have been in Vanilla Subnautica. I think that would have been cool. We also have an ampule antenna, which is an interesting concept that apparently draws power from ampules that swim near your base. This would especially be good if you were like in the bulb zone or whatever. We also have an auto farming unit right here a scanner camera relay antenna from what i understand this makes it so scanner room cameras can travel as far away from the base as they want there's no real limit we also have this dome light right here pretty self-explanatory just a new light this is an interesting concept right here as well it's a precursor power tap so you would build this near one of the precursor power lines that are all across the crater and it would presumably draw power from that and use it to power your base it probably gives you a ton of power too there's also this stasis pylon right here i'll show you what this does in just a second too 
This is also interesting. A rock crusher. Presumably, it breaks down large resource deposits into smaller chunks. Here we go. This is what it looks like right here. Then we have this plankton feeder as well, which disperses plankton into the water. And from what I understand, it basically makes it so more creatures will come near your base. The creatures that, of course, eat the plankton. So yeah, you load up some plankton in here, and then it would start doing that. We also have several interior pieces right here. We have this bioprocessor right here, which decomposes and recombines organic matter into useful raw materials. This is kind of what that looks like. I would definitely assume this is very helpful. We also have a liquid breather recharger. There we go. It essentially recharges this liquid breathing system you'll see on me right now, which I'll talk about a little bit more in a second. We also have an alien containment unit cleaning system, as well as an alien containment unit Phoenix system. We also have the sea base battery bank right here. So you can make your sea bases just have a ton of extra power. There's also this item display right here as well, which is an amazing idea. I feel like we should have had something like this in Vanilla Subnautica. Let's see, what should I display on here? How about some kyanite? Here we go. And would you look at that? Yeah, it's just kind of floating and displaying itself, going up and down and everything. And then we have the control terminal right here. Now this controls a couple of the things I already built outside. As you can see, we have the stasis one. And yeah, here we go. We have this huge stasis bubble around our base now. This seriously must be very useful, especially if you're building a base in a very dangerous biome. We also have the repellent pylon, which repels creatures from your base. This is what the repellent pylon looks like when it's activated. There's nothing too special about it. And then of course we have the sonar. Let me show you what that looks like really quickly. And yeah, here we go. This is kind of what you would expect. Just some normal sonar. Now, in addition to everything I've already showed you, the alien containment unit has also been revamped to have something called biome visuals. So when you have the plants and the species in the alien containment that match a certain biome, it's going to actually change the fog and a couple of other things to match the biome as well. And yeah, as you can see, that looks pretty cool. This is, of course, the Lost River. Honestly, an amazing idea. Would have loved to see this in Vanilla Subnautica as well. There's a lot of things that are in this mod that I think should have been added to Vanilla Subnautica. Not everything, but definitely a lot. And over here, you can see what the blood cup looks like as well with the biome visual thing. Very cool idea. Now, there's also a couple of new pieces of equipment that have been added in this mod as well. First off, you'll notice we have these red and white tablets. I'll talk about these guys a little bit more later. We also have this electrochemical suit. Now, this protects you from the hazards in the Lost River, which I'll show you a little bit later. Then we also have the recirculation mask and the liquid breathing system. I talked about this again a little bit earlier. That thing I built back there would be used to refill this liquid breathing system right here. Let me go ahead and build these three really quickly. And you can kind of see what this looks like when I'm swimming around right here. The liquid breathing system especially is an awesome idea. It makes exploring at really deep depths a lot more realistic. And then in the modification station, we have the Seamoth Depth Module MK4, which increases the crush depth to 1,300 meters. And then we have these nano wrap bandages right here, which are basically just normal first aid kits on steroids from what I understand. Yeah, there you go. This is what they look like and everything. Now, as you can also see here, there's also a ton of new resources that have been added to the game. You can kind of see that in the recipes here. We have stuff like sulfuric acid. We got platinum and platinum ingots and everything. Salt blocks, iridium. There's a whole bunch of cool new resources that are all used for a bunch of new recipes. Wow, it got dark real quick there. Must be an eclipse. Wow, yeah, that's cool. Now, one of the things this mod achieves is it makes the game a whole lot more difficult. And it also makes it take a whole lot longer as the mod basically forces you to explore every single inch of the crater in order to collect all the resources you're going to need in order to hit all the key story elements and get all the unique blueprints that can only be found in certain areas. And basically the game's progression is honestly entirely changed with this mod. And so it's like completely playing the game all over again. And to demonstrate how much more difficult things are now, you can kind of see the resources needed to craft the Neptune rocket. Basically, it is a lot more harder to escape the planet. There's a whole lot of new crazy wild resources you need. And it's going to take a lot longer. There's also this thing where you need to like collect a certain number of like creatures. It's like the Altera desired research sample manifest. You need to give Altera basically samples of all the life forms here, which of course is going to take a really long time. There's also like a biome survey. You basically just need to visit every single biome, similar kind of thing. And so it's things like that that make this take so much longer and be so much more difficult. Although it's seriously got to be rewarding to finally finish everything. Another interesting thing you can do with this mod is literally mine the Aurora. That's right. If you get a laser cutter and then you jailbreak it through a method I'll show you a little bit later, you can mine the Aurora for infinite metal salvage. 
crazy idea, but it seriously must be useful for all the resource the gathering Aurora you have to do. Uh, of the All Terra Corporation. Do not attempt salvage of the Aurora's materials. But yeah, as you can see, it just gives you a ton of metal salvage right here. And you can actually perform a similar kind of thing in two other areas of the crater. The meteorite in the dunes and a lava dome in the lava zone. All right, yeah, we're here at the meteorite. As you can see, we can drill the metal rich meteorite and it's going to give me infinite resources here. There's a bunch of different things it can give me. So it's not totally certain every single time. As you can see, I got lead that time. So yeah, this is a cool concept. Definitely very, very helpful for collecting resources. All right, yeah, here we are at the lava dome. It's basically the same thing. It's just going to give you different resources, more lava zone consistent resources, I guess. Like for example, kyanite. Or it looks like I just got quartz. I mean, I guess that's lava related, whatever. Now, another new mechanic in this mod is that when you go below, I believe, 400 meters, as you would expect to be realistic, your oxygen starts to run out really fast. So I'll show you that here really quickly. Let's go ahead and take off my recirculation mask and everything. Oh, wow. Yeah, look how fast the oxygen is going down. I'm even taking damage from the pressure, it looks like. And boom, I'm dead. I mean, it's realistic, more realistic to what would happen in real life, I suppose. And it adds a new mechanic to the game, essentially. Now, as I talked about previously, the lava zone has also been changed so it's like toxic and cold and everything so it's gonna start killing me here in just a second yeah look at that oh that's going on really quickly let me get out of here oh wow yeah so you gotta wear the appropriate protection which is of course the electrochemical suit now it's the same kind of thing for vehicles when you enter the lost river as you can see my power is going to start going down really really quickly yeah there we go it's causing all sorts of crazy power losses and yeah you're gonna have to build certain upgrades in order to get around that yet another new mechanic and it's the same kind of thing with the lava zone as well as soon as i go into survival here i'm gonna start dying really quickly yeah that was really fast wow so obviously you're gonna need some protection unlike in vanilla subnautica where you could just kind of chill and just slowly take tiny ticks of damage which wasn't really realistic at all another interesting new mechanic is the addition of these water currents in certain caves in certain areas i mean it makes sense for there to be water currents i guess if this is a huge ocean i suppose i honestly wish we had some sort of currents in the original subnautica i feel like they definitely could have added it like it wouldn't be too hard but yeah this is what the currents look like and everything they just kind of push you along as you would expect I guess. And conveniently, they block off certain areas. And yeah, I told you I was gonna get back to these guys. They are known as Iso crystals. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it. But yeah, these are essentially just hazards that are randomly placed all around the crater. As you can see with this guy, they get all electric and then they send out an EMP blast. So yeah, an interesting new mechanic here as well. Now, perhaps one of the coolest things that have been added in this mod is the addition of several new wrecked life pods and abandoned sea bases that were constructed by people who survived for some amount of time after their life pod crashed this is one that landed in the sea treaders path as you can see it's really cool it basically just got crushed by the sea treaders which is what you would expect to happen i suppose so yeah this is a very cool idea i could see this in vanilla subnautica we also have a new life pod in the crash zone mesa's mini biome and of course they come with a new data box for some new equipment perhaps one of the coolest is the wreckage of one that you can find in the void very cool idea i mean you just kind of gotta assume it got ripped apart by ghost leviathans of course we got a data box here here with some hole plating very interesting oh wow that ghost leviathan just launched me interesting okay thanks for that and yeah we have another life pod right here life pod 14 that is next to what i believe is a new wreck as well now here's a base that was actually built by a pre-existing life pod as you can see it makes sense they would have had a builder tool and they would have been able to build something i guess yeah as you can see they got a couple plants and everything here i'm not sure where they planted a tiger plant interesting and we got a couple of pipes leading into the cave over here all right yeah we're back in the blood kelp zone as you can see and as you can also see there is this massive base that has been built it is honestly quite amazing i wish my bases were like this really impressive stuff looks awesome and of course you'd be able to explore it in order to get certain equipment and everything so yeah this was constructed by one of the survivors of the aurora we somehow just didn't run into them and they were able to build this massive base oh well try not to think about that too much there's another smaller base that can be found in the sea treasures path as you can see it looks like it got uh destroyed by some sort of cave collapse here rocks fell from the ceiling and completely destroyed it i like the idea of there being at least some base that were built by survivors i think that would be cool besides of course the Degasi. and then here's another relatively big one in the mountains biome technically inside the mountains cave again it's designed very well looks pretty cool and everything and you'd go inside in order to get some sort of new piece of equipment that you need to progress in the game and nearby there's also these buildings that were built on the uh, mountain island itself 
just solar panels for lights and stuff and everything. And as you can see here, there's also been a couple new wrecks that have been added to the game. This is the one in the dunes. Nothing too special. Of course, they just house new equipment or some sort of thing you're going to need eventually in order to progress. And then, of course, we also have another one in the Cragfield biome. Now, another interesting detail that this mod adds is that after the gun shoots down the sunbeam, there's a whole bunch of new wreckage that is scattered throughout the mountain biome here. So, I mean, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, there would be some wreckage, at least from the sunbeam, maybe you would expect. You see some of it like burning and falling into the ocean and everything. Definitely helpful again for resource collection. Now, I also promised I would tell you how I jailbroke the laser cutter. Well, as it turns out, every single alien base has been modified to some extent by this mod. So this right here is the precursor modification console. You'd hold the laser cutter in your hand and then it would jailbreak it. Yeah, it's another interesting idea. I'm not exactly sure why the precursors had this, but I mean, hey, at least you get to mine the Aurora, right? We're now in the disease research facility. And as you can see, in order to open this force field right here, you now need an orange tablet. And you also need a red tablet in order to open this one right here. There's also a new data terminal right here. And now this gives you some of the new equipment. It's the heat protection technology, I believe. So this would allow you to explore the lava zone. We're now in the alien thermal plant right here. And now, as you can see, in order to get the blue tablet back there, you now need a white tablet to open this door. Blue tablet, of course, still unlocks the primary containment facility. And I think I lied. I honestly don't think the primary containment facility and a bunch of the other smaller alien bases have been modified by this mod. It's mostly just the ones I showed you from what I understand. And then down here again, in order to get the ion power blueprints, you're going to need another white tablet. And yeah, I believe that's everything. There is a whole lot more than what I was able to talk about in this video. A lot of it's really complicated. There's a lot of like small tweaks that weren't even really worth mentioning. There's a whole like hard mode setting you could turn on, I believe, that makes everything even more difficult than it already is. It's honestly too much to cover in a video of this length. That being said, thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.